Today we're gonna to be trying to renovate the goth mansion yet again. I've done this or attempted this a few times, but this time I feel like I've actually done a really good job. Fingers crossed you guys like it as well, otherwise that might be a bit awkward. Before we get into it, I just wanna thank our sponsor, Honey. I'm gonna to speak to you guys about this like I would a friend or a family member because I genuinely really recommend it. Basically, how do I describe it? Honey is like a little icon in the top of your browser and it automatically searches for discount codes. So for example, I was looking for, I think, gym shorts and a gym top the other day and I used Honey and it found discount codes, which gave me some great savings. So it actually works on a lot of the websites you are shopping on and for a lot of things that you may be buying. So without Honey, you could be missing out on zero savings. The other awesome thing is that you can download it for free at joinhoney.com forward slash delicacy. Like I said, I honestly do recommend it. I use it all the time. Um, I actually don't think I shop without checking honey. So yeah, totally recommend it. I'll give you a second to download it. I've actually renamed this my sippy cup. All right, so first up, I just got the regular goth's house and I deleted everything in it. And the reason why I'm doing this bit by bit without just bulldozing the whole house is one, because we want to renovate it, obviously. But two, I also wanted to see if I could do this without adding like any other budget to it. So essentially only being able to sell what's already in the house to pay for the new stuff. And the reason for that is because I didn't want to add any extra value to this home in base game. Cause then, I don't know, I feel like if you're wanting to play with the exact same base game funding, then it's still the same like amount of money. For some reason, I just like doing that. And it's what I've been doing recently. I think I'm actually trying to rebuild Willow Creek without um, cheating any funds. So yeah, I don't know. It seems to be just an organic challenge that's happening for us. And this is kind of a tough house to renovate because it is such a strange shape. And I know a lot of players really dislike many of the EA builds. Um, I actually like this one. Like I think the Goths house is always interesting to look at. I mean, I've seen the Goths since The Sims 1 Goth house, The Sims 2, The Sims 3, and now The Sims 4. And I always like to see what they've done with it. And I always look forward to seeing what kind of Goth family is gonna be in uh in this game of the sims so this house i really liked i thought it was kind of weird and a little bit creepy and you know it's a real base game house there's no bells and whistles i think the only thing i would have wished is that this was on a bigger lot um because the goths are meant to be made of money right <laughs> i wanted them to be on a bigger lot uh because i think the story is or the lore is that the land grabs and the goths are like against each other because they both helped found in founding like Pleasant View, which was Sims 3. I don't know, I get so confused with the law, but I think it was Sims 4 is actually a completely separate timeline to the Sims 3. So the storyline that we saw in the Sims 3, even I think the Sims 2 and Sims 1 maybe, uh, it's completely separate to that. And Bella Goth in The Sims 3 actually died. So I'm glad she's alive in this one because she's kind of my hero. <laughs> um, and you know what? Renovating their house kind of wants me, like it makes me really want to play them as well. I don't know. In my mind, the Goths, like this is my personal storytelling view of the Goths. I think they are a family with a lot of skeletons in the closet. I think they have a lot of old money. And it's really weird because they're actually nice Sims in The Sims 4, but in my mind, Mortimer and Bella Goth aren't very nice Sims at all. Like they're very conniving and I don't know. You just wouldn't trust them. Um, so for me, I feel like they'd live in a house that, you know, is obviously goth. It's got that darkness to it. It's a little bit creepy. But at the same time, I think Bella is a little bit glamorous and they do like spending money and they are a bit materialistic. And that's why they live in a big home. So I actually thought for this build, we would still keep a gothic vibe, but it would be a little bit more of a modern gothic twist. 
So I looked up a whole heap of pictures online of what modern Gothic houses look like, and it really does vary a lot. Like, it can be something like an old Gothic house or property that they put modern furniture in. And it's just like literally only the building is Gothic and the juxtaposition of the old and the new works. Or some people, you know, put Gothic furniture in a newer home, like it goes both ways. And then there's what we are trying to do, which is just having a blend of both on the exterior, but also the interior. So we are going to be having a Gothic building with, you know, some more modernized big glass windows. Um, we're also going to have an interior where there are definitely Gothic pieces of furniture, but we're also going to pair it with like a brutalist aesthetic. So brutalism, from my understanding, is like super, I think lots, lots of concrete, sharp, rectangular edges, uh, just very, it's kind of bleak. Lots of concrete, very sparse, that's kind of brutalist. So I thought, you know what, let's do like a Gothic brutalist, I don't know mix because I feel like both brutalism and gothic architecture and interior design has a little bit of a cold feeling to it, a little bit of a dark or evil feeling to it. You know, I'm not saying if you live in a gothic or a brutalist home, you have evil vibes, but I just feel like when you put it with the goth family, it might feel a bit like that. So I actually didn't see any brutalist gothic homes when I was researching. Like I'm sure there are lots of them, but I kind of just ended up merging the two of them. I don't know. It just kind of happened. I And I actually used the Batu wallpaper funnily enough, which I think is very similar to another wallpaper. I can't remember which other pack has it. Maybe it's Jungle Adventure, but they're very similar. And you know, I think there's actually a similar wallpaper in base game too. So if you wanted to download this and you don't have Journey to Batu, you'll easily be able to find a wallpaper to fit these walls. And it's basically a perfect match to the Get Famous wallpaper that has the um, like the two-tone uh, strip of concrete at the bottom, which we'll use in a little while. So the entrance room I love in big houses, whenever you see like a mansion on TV or in a magazine, they always have this grand entrance room. Often it has a staircase, but they always have this round table in the middle of the room. I just don't see why it's practical other than maybe putting like a big vase on it, but I felt like we had to have one of those. And then I think another trend at the moment is having lots of like black on black on black and matte blacks. Uh, so I feel like having a lot of the furniture is just dark black coloring works really well to also give it a slightly modern twist too. And then, yeah, I, I really wanted to have pops of color. I really wanted to kind of, I don't know. I, I just wanted to lighten everything up so I had to really fight that urge because myself, I love everything white and bright. I mean, you can kind of see the room behind me. I just like things, the brighter, the better. I love loads of natural light. Uh, I feel claustrophobic quite easily. And so for me to do a build with mostly dark swatches was kind of painful. I had to fight against myself to change it, but I'm actually really glad with how it turned out. And I thought you guys would feel it suited the goths a lot more than us trying to use lots of different colors. I don't know what you guys will think. I'm sure some of you guys will really dislike this build, but hopefully some of you guys like this build. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of working with the lounge room here. I felt like the lounge room was looking a little bit too open. So we're actually gonna put a wall and archway where the chess table is. And also in this video, in case I forget to mention it, um, I do actually add some things off camera as well, like a few more objects so that, uh, particularly Cassandra Goth who has violin skill and she's creative, I wanted to add like the violin in. So we'll see that when we actually do a walkthrough of this build towards the end of it. I also felt like I couldn't find the right fireplace. Uh, I mean, this fireplace is actually Art Deco, which does not go with this house at all. So <laughs> that's a little bit awkward, but I was like, I don't feel like any of the other ones are in the right color swatch for me. And also it always looks a little strange when the TV goes over the sides of a fireplace, I feel. 
So I would probably have liked to put a custom content fireplace in there that looked more gothic, but hey, it still works. And I also wanted to kind of bring in the modern theme of having lots of plants and greenery that's been a trend for the last few years. Like plants and greenery is really huge right now. So I thought, you know what, let's bring, let's bring in heaps of greenery and give it a little bit of a jungle twist as well. And that'll help modernize it and also break up all of the dark colors and make it feel a little bit more brighter, um, a little bit more softer. So that's a little bit, a little bit trendy maybe, but also a little bit calmer too. Love the big windows too. Those big glass windows are from Realm of Magic. And then we've also used archways from vampires. There are quite a few vampire things in here. Uh, I actually think those bird statues are from Batu as well. This bookshelf, oh, that one I was looking at right now is from Get Famous, but I think we end up using base game ones, don't we? Are they base game ones? Oh no, they're university ones. Cause they look a little bit Gothic too. Uh, hanging plants are from the kind of new plant kit that came out not too long ago. Love those. I've been using them nonstop, actually. Really enjoying that kit. And I think those candelabras hanging down are from... Are they vampires or they get famous? Oh, I think they're vampires. I've kind of forgotten. Putting curtains on these, these windows was a little bit difficult because the curtains that go with them are very storybook looking. Like, I just didn't think they suited the house at all. But I didn't want to compromise on these great windows because I thought the windows looked really good. So I'm actually not sure if we even put curtains on those windows, but we use the Get Famous ones and I think cats and dog ones for upstairs in the bedroom, which is kind of unexpected. And then I was thinking about using those modern lights on the walls right now, uh, but we end up changing them just to Gothic ones in the end because I felt like I was just pushing the modern theme a little bit too much and I don't know, I feel like you guys would have preferred more gothic, so we add a bit more gothic in there. But I reckon this house is so cool. Like, if I went to this house, I'd be like, this is so awesome. And that flooring, where is that flooring from? It might be from Get Famous, the stage flooring, but I thought it was a perfect color because it's charcoal black, but it's not like dark black and it's a matte finish so it does look a bit a little bit modern because I feel like glossed floorboards a little bit more traditional looking um so yeah I was like this is perfect <laughs> for our brutalist gothic fusion and then I was trying to work on having a feature wall behind the tv and I honestly don't really remember what we put there I think I just go with a darker wall than the gray walls Honestly, we could have done like all black walls, but I actually felt like, honestly, with gameplay, it would just be kind of annoying not being able to see anything. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can make all the walls black. I think it would look pretty cool, but it's just up to you if that's enough lighting for you. Uh, and I think the lighter gray walls show off texture a bit more, and then it just, it looks a little bit more brutalist too. So to the right of this room is the dining area, which has a grand piano in it. And actually, in I think it was The Sims 1 had a really cool... No, it wasn't The Sims 1 goth house. Now I'm going to have to look it up. I think it was The Sims 3 um, goth house was one of my favorites. Let me just check it out. Because they had... It was a really unusual kind of floor plan because they had this like a uh, sunken garden in indoors it was so strange but because it was weird I was like this is so cool I actually probably need to open up my own sims 3 game to look at it because I'm just not seeing it here right now uh sims 2 I I can barely remember the house in the sims 2 um and then sims 1 the goth's house was I think the Goths actually had a graveyard in Sims 1, 2, and 3 at their house. So I don't know why there was no graveyard in the Sims 4. Maybe it's because they just didn't have graveyards yet. But we had tombstones when Sims died. So 
If it was me, I would have thought it was really important to put them on a bigger lot, like a 50 by 50 lot, and to have a little graveyard area with a little bit of lore. Like a storyline behind it, maybe a couple of dead sims. There's a lot of death in the goth family, which makes it really mysterious, and I just would have liked to see that in The Sims 4 as well. You know what? Why didn't I add a graveyard in this renovation? I failed the renovation again. Oh no. Oh dear. Well, there, I guess in the backyard there is a little bit of room if any of them, you know, fall off their perch. Um, also, there is a light on one of the windows in the kitchen. Just letting you know, before I uploaded it, I removed that light so you won't look through the glass and see the light. Uh, and then the kitchen is a little bit tricky too. Originally, I was going to go for like a old gothic kitchen. And in the end, we just went more kind of modern with fancy chairs and a fancy pillar. I actually think it was due to not having the right swatches that I didn't go for a more classic looking kitchen because I probably would have preferred to go in that direction. But this was really the only true black on black swatch that wasn't, I don't know, lacking in, I think texture is probably the main thing. Like texture just wasn't fancy enough on a lot of the counters that I was looking at. So we ended up just going with this and keeping it modern and plain. I don't know, I don't mind it, but these bar stools I was really torn about. Like, I'm not sure if I'll show it in the video, but I kept changing them. Like I changed the swatch, I think 20 times. I was gonna say 50, but that's probably too much. Probably about, yeah, 20 times I changed the swatches on those chairs, just from purple to black to red, to purple to black to red. And in the end, we end up going back to the purple that they are now. I just felt like Bella would like a little bit of purple, you know? Mortimer, maybe Mortimer likes a little bit of purple too. Purple's kind of the color of magic, I feel. I don't know if that's a thing, maybe it is, but purple just seems a little bit magical to me. And I know the Goths have had some magical Sims in their bloodline, I think, or at least have had aliens or being, because Bella was abducted by aliens, I think. And then Mortimer, this is on the other timeline, I think Mortimer had an affair with an alien or something. Honestly, I get so lost with it, but I feel like there's a little bit of maybe potential magic lineage to do with the goths. And if you don't like playing with the cults, then just weird stuff. <laughs> And then this dining room, oh my gosh, you guys are gonna love the floor plan when we get upstairs and you see what's going on above the dining room. There's like a little bridge and the dining room actually has double ceiling height. It's like the coolest dining room ever. So this dining room, I really wanted there to be at least a pop of some kind of color uh, because it is kind of the fancy room in the house. It's maybe where you would bring people to show off uh, you know, maybe like a business dinner, you want to look grand in there and maybe for celebrations. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is if there's a room to dress up, it's probably going to be the dining room. So we kind of go all out with this. I thought the blue swatches on the chairs were really cool and I almost got rid of the red rugs. But in the end, I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep it. You know, it's a little bit old school, but it's kind of awesome. And then I've also used these Get Famous curtains that I think we end up changing them to a different swatch maybe. And I also love the Seasons trees in that white swatch or the gray swatch. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. Uh, and then the big chandelier, then of course the, <laughs> I think that's a Batu wall hanging. I don't know, it looks kind of cool. And then there's even a Batu like pot there. There's a lot of Batu in this build. Who would have thought that the Goth's house would look awesome with Batu in it? Anyway, and there's like swords above the archway too. I think those are from Get Famous. Oh no, I changed the rug. I thought I had the red rug in here. Oh, maybe I regret that decision. I don't know, you guys. I feel like you could go either way, depending on what you want. Uh, and then I was trying you know, the curtains in the other rooms. I was trying red chairs, I was trying blue chairs, I was trying the purple curtains. If you're into the grand curtains, then you could put those violet ones in the kitchen too. I ended up taking them down. Um, Cause I thought they looked a little 
tacky. But, you know, everyone's got different taste. Uh, so yeah. And the kitchen's kind of weird because it's kind of massive, you know? In a lot of old houses, you know what? In actually a lot of mansions, the kitchens are quite small compared to the rest of the house, unless people get like chef kitchens, which I know some people with a lot of money do do. Um, so, but it's actually really surprising. Maybe it's in older mansions. The kitchens can be so small. Um, I don't know, but this one's a big one. And I can't remember if one of the goths end up liking cooking. Maybe Alexander Goth does. My throat is so dry right now. And funnily enough, I ended up using jungle adventure tiles in the kitchen. Cause the gray of the wall in this swatch goes with the gray, the Batu gray in the other rooms. Now do not dislike the house because I use Batu, please. And there's a couple of bathrooms. Man, my throat is so dry right now. Okay, so now we have, oh yeah, these are just the powder rooms. They're not that exciting. They basically all look the same. It's also like 50 bazillion, gazillion degrees in here. I don't know why, but we do have ducted aircon and heating in this house. But for some reason, my luck, it just doesn't really work in my office. Like it works in every other room except for here. I think it's because it's at the other end of the house. So this room heats up when the lights are on and the computers have been running for a while. Uh, it's like a little hot box. So, you know, oh, I really do love that lounge room. I mean, can you imagine walking into that place and just being like, wow, whoa, this is unique. Now upstairs we have three bedrooms. They all have en suites. The master en suite has a double basin because we love that. Uh, you know, his and hers, hers and hers, he's and he's, they and they's, we love it. And then, yeah, for the kids' bedrooms, Cassandra actually, okay. So if you are familiar with the original goth lot, uh, I think Alexander Goth's room is on the third level upstairs. It's kind of weird, it's like an attic room. But I actually put him on the second floor with his parents and Cassandra. But Cassandra has kind of, it's not really a hidden staircase, but it's a subtle staircase that goes to a really big attic. And up there in like a top balcony, like secret attic basically has skill building items. So because she's into the arts, her violin is up there. I put some uh, painting easels up there as well, and a couple of things for Alexander. Oh, you can almost see the walkway. We we might see it during the walkthrough. I'm not sure. I think this video would have actually taken an hour if I showed you all the footage, which I feel like was too long. I know some of you guys would froth it if the video was that long, um, but it's really not for everyone to watch videos that long. I'm sorry, you guys. If you like long videos and real time, uh, I do live stream. I've been live streaming twice a week at the moment. And on my other channel, More Deligracy, you can watch the full live stream. So it's basically me just talking in real time, telling you all of my thoughts as I build. Uh, but on this channel, I try and keep it a little bit more compact. Um, so like max 30 minute videos or like 40 minute videos. So this is Bella and Mortimer Goth's bedroom at the front of the house. So I felt like Bella would definitely want to have a dresser. And I did put a little bit of light wood in the corner with that wardrobe. I'm not sure if we end up changing that, but I did like it, the contrast. And I felt like it might be a family heirloom. Uh, and I'm a big fan of light wood. So I just had to sneak one in, even if it was for a few minutes. So this room's quite nice and yeah, it's just gray. I think we leave it with that gray wallpaper and that's a more traditional Gothic wallpaper. Or if it's not, if we don't want to describe it as Gothic wallpaper, it's a more traditional wallpaper, okay? Uh, so I think that works well. And then I was experimenting with maybe having a red bed because you know, red is the color of the Goths due to Bella Goth's red dress. And I feel like Mortimer Goth also, does he wear a red suit? Or have like a red tie in one of the games? 
not sure, but I think red's a good color for them. Then I was looking into purple and I was looking into blues, but this is gonna be Cassandra Goff's room. So her room's at the back of the house. <gasps> can't wait to show you the full floor plan in a second. Look at the wall. <sighs> you can't really see it yet. Just hold on, you'll see it at the end of the video. I'm obsessed. I don't know what it is about walkways in houses on the second level that looks down to the lower level, but it just seems so cool. And like double height ceilings would be a dream to live in. <sighs> I mean, the apartment I lived in last did have high ceilings, but it definitely wasn't double ceilings. Uh, and now we have just regular schmegular ceilings. Oh yeah, so this wallpaper looks really cool. Um, the red one. Jeez, I, you know, I'm really switching up the colors a lot. This is what I do. I just go through like every single swatch and try all of these different combinations. And then most of the time, I usually just go back to the first thing I selected. It's kind of funny, but you know, at least I made sure. It's the same thing when I get dressed to go out, I try on one thing, then I try on another five things. And then I go back to the thing I first tried on. So really, is it wasting time or is it just being sure? I'm not sure. Uh, so these are the cats and oh, maybe city living curtains. We might use a blend of both. I didn't really put any um, restrictions on the packs I used other than just no custom content. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course saving, but oh, you can see the walkway. Yeah, I also recommend you guys save a lot in The Sims 4, especially when you're building or renovating a big house, because the amount of times I have lost builds, it pains me to think about all the builds I have lost over the time and the gameplay. It's just, <sighs> you win some, you lose some, okay? The main thing is this one. We've still got this one. I've already uploaded it to the gallery, so we're good. Actually, some of you guys have probably already seen it. Let me know if you already saw it on the gallery, because that's quick. That's very quick. Uh, I think, are we still in? Oh yeah, we are in Cassandra's room right now. I love this desk. I think this desk is so cool. It was from paranormal stuff. It's just, I think one of the reasons why I love it is because it's a similar style to what my grandparents had. And now I think my mom in, has inherited the desk but it's one of those like it looks like one of those fold up desks where you can like fold the desk up and then you can fold it down again into a desk and there's like lots of little hidey holes and drawers to put things in i just find them to be very beautiful and kind of special uh get famous bookshelf this one i don't actually use that often one because it's ornamental it's also really tall like it doesn't fit into the shortest wall height it goes beyond it so it's always fun to use those when you know, the build's a little bit more extra and the walls are tall enough. I actually do like that we have some taller bookshelves. The ideal would be if bookshelves came in all three heights, but you know, i rather have more different items than <laughs> three versions of each bookshelf or with different books on them. That would be cool. Actually, that would be more useful than different heights, I think. So if you place them side by side, they don't all look the same or the swatches don't not go together but have the same books you know what i mean uh so yeah this is alexander's room it's a little bit smaller he's a kid though so originally when i did this room i forgot he was a kid so i gave him a desk with a laptop but don't worry before we actually go through the rest of the build um in first person mode we realized that i replaced his desk with a toy box so he's actually a kid and we cater for that, so that's good. And then also upstairs in the attic area, which is actually just around that corner uh, behind Cassandra's ensuite. We also put like a science station upstairs for Alexander too. Yeah, I think this has turned out really good. I'm really happy with it. Okay, dokie, so here we are. I know it is a little bit hard to see because the house is kind of all the same color, but it is, pretty much the same shape as it originally was. Um, it's actually not that different. Upstairs is a little bit different and maybe there's a few tweaks in the sides of the house, but it's not actually a completely different build. Definitely similar to how it was. 
And I got a lot of inspiration actually from the film Despicable Me from his house. I looked at the exterior of that. I looked at the house in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think it was Carmen's house. She lived in this like Gothic mansion. Oh, Car 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 Carlton's house. That's what her name was. Um, and this is the back of it. Put a little basketball hoop out there. But the nice thing with the renovation is I think the house does flow more. And also we have this third level balcony, which I think looks quite beautiful too. This window is just glitching out. So Bella is at the front of the house. We have some gargoyle things to greet us. So the entrance room is actually quite minimal. I think it, uh, it's quite a nice entry room because it does have quite a bit of natural light. And from the front door view, it does look kind of extra. There's actually a bathroom next to that statue. So in here is the lounge room, and I was really struggling to pick a coffee table. And in the end, I was like, you know what? Let's just have a coffin. So this is a coffin object, and I've just used the zero and nine keys to place objects on top of it. You might want to change it if it's annoying, but I just thought it looked really cool, and it was such a goth thing to do. You know, they got their TV, they got their kind of creepy sculptures of birds, fireplace going, like some old school stuff. I love this little chess table room, so pretty. Yeah, I think I, I think I love this renovation. In here is the dining room. This has to be one of my favorite rooms in the house because above it is this walkway, which I think is so cool and grand. You can like look down to see people eating and then there's this gargoyle on the wall looking down at the dining table. Like, oh my gosh, how extra is that? So to better get an idea of how it works, um, the staircase runs up to the walkway and then you can get to the balcony across this bridge so this is the dining room we got a feature red color definitely suits Bella's dress like I feel like her favorite color must be red and then in here is our kitchen love the lavender bar stools big window so you know it doesn't look as dark as all the dark colors here Oh my gosh, there's like one patch of wall with parenthood wallpaper. How did that happen? I don't understand how I managed it, but it's really not meant to be like that. Uh, there's also another powder room in here. Always good to have a powder room close to the dining room. And this is a surprisingly nice blue color. Let's go upstairs. Like I said, upstairs we have this walkway that I'm super duper proud of. I don't even know if you guys will think it's that awesome, but clearly I do. <laughs> And then we have the bedroom. So this first bedroom, love the dungeon doors too. Uh, this is Bella and Mortimer's room. Oh, I ended up going with a purple bed. Okay, I thought I didn't go for that, but kind of love it. It's a uh, very old school, but kind of glam. Your wardrobe here, gonna lie, their ensuite's kind of scary. And further down the hallway, we have Cassandra's room on the left, and then we have Alexander's room on the right. Let's go to Alexander's. Oh yeah, so he's got this red room. It's actually so cute with a skeleton bear. This bed and the wallpaper is stunning. Nice guy's bookshelf and his toy box. En suite in there. There's also a nice balcony at the end here. It's actually quite nice. And then Cassandra's room. Cassandra's room's a little bit brighter. This bed actually comes in a blue color as well, so you could even put more blue in the room. Yeah, I thought I'd just kind of turn it down a little bit by having the white bedspread. Uh, and I love that blue bookcase. I think that looks amazing. So it's actually around from her desk. Wow, look at her view. Imagine that. Uh, just through there is actually the staircase that, oh, Bella wants to show us the way. That's great. Oh, also her ensuite's in there. So this attic you guys haven't seen yet, but I think Bella likes it. Like it's, it was deliberately made to look really empty and just have some lanterns. I mean, you can do with this whatever you want. Um, it could be a kid's bedroom coming up from an office maybe in, in Cassandra's room instead. And it's got like Christmas decorations and then it has the most beautiful balcony. Like this is so stunning. And I actually really love the full windows on the left and the roof line. So just to give you some context. Oh, sure, she can like mischief. Just to give you guys some context, that's the upper balcony that we just came out of. 
And then downstairs, it's really not that exciting because it is not a very big lot for a big house. So there's just like a bird bath and some planters and the basketball hoop. Totally, you should make a graveyard here. Uh, and there's also like a barbecue. And then you can see uh, there's like some bench chairs and stuff like that. So there you are, you guys. That is the, what is going on with my hair? That is the goth mansion. I really hope you guys liked it. So thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the build and make sure to check out Honey and download Honey. Join honey.com forward slash deligracy. It helps support the channel as well, not to mention it's just a great and handy thing to have. So thanks, Honey, again. Hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're around the world. I'll speak to you soon. Duck, duck.